Hello mates, this is Mad Mike with the Apocalypse Post. Today we're going to be talking about how the United States is reacting to North Korea's nuclear ambitions, how to protect yourself from uh, giant asteroids. We're going to talk about a brand new post-apocalypse fully immersive event that's going to be happening in Arizona later this month. And I'm going to review Paramore's new post-apocalyptic music video. Plus, at the end of the episode, I'll let you know who won the blaster from our last episode's tutorial. So stick around, and here we go. The United States has announced it's going to be spending another billion dollars to upgrade its missile defense system that protects the West Coast. That's all because of North Korea's repeated threats for, quote, a preemptive nuclear attack to destroy the strongholds of the aggressors and defend the supreme interests of the country. This is, of course, plan B after the professional envoy that was sent there last month to talk them down. Holy cow! Did you see the footage of the meteor off the United States East Coast? It was a little reminiscent of that 10,000 ton monster that lit up Russia last month. Now, considering it was a giant asteroid that wiped the dinosaurs out 65 million years ago, you may be wondering what we're doing to make sure that the same type of thing doesn't wipe us out. Back in 2005, Congress had asked NASA to track at least 90% of all the near-Earth objects over 140 meters. So far, NASA's got grasp of about 10,000 of them, which is only about 10% of what they think could exist. NASA's chief, Charles Bolden, says it'll be about 2030 before we hit that 90% mark, citing budget cuts as the major reason for delay. Now, when they asked what NASA could do if we found an asteroid on a collision course with Earth that would hit within three weeks, all Bolden could say was, pray. The first ever End of Days post-apocalypse festival will be taking place this month, April 19th to the 21st. It all takes place on the festival zone 40 acre lot just outside the Painted Desert in Arizona, in the middle of f***ing nowhere. The idea behind the festival is to turn this wasteland into a thriving post-apocalyptic city called Uranium Springs. All participants should be in costume and you're encouraged to bring your own post-apocalyptic cap. Now, pre-sale tickets are done, except you can still buy your own way in for $40 on site. And uh, all the information you might need, you can find on the website, theeod.org. All right, another season of The Walking Dead's come to a close. Uh, but let's be honest, I haven't been watching since it started to suck in season two. So if you're one of the ones still watching, why don't you uh, leave me a little message, tell me why I should give it another chance. Moving on. Have you guys seen Paramore's new music video for their song now? Check it out. Lead singer Hayley Williams called this video a little bit post-apocalyptic and a little bit sci-fi. And uh, it's actually got a cool concept and the costumes are great. However, I think it misses the mark as far as the lack of structures, vehicles, weapons and everything else that makes the post-apocalypse genre cool. I mean, they use coloured powder instead of blood. They use these police batons instead of blades or guns. And well, it just leaves us asking one question. Hayley, what happened to your eyebrows? All right, the winner of the post-apocalypse blaster from last episode's tutorial is Cody Williams. So go ahead and send me your address, mate, and I'll uh, get it shipped right out to you. And I'll have a lot more giveaways from our subscribers coming up, so make sure you hit the TV to subscribe. Right there. Click it. Go ahead. That's it for this episode of the Apocalypse Post. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you guys in two weeks. Stay alive.